Okay, the next few slides are going to have some crazy looking formulas, and don't get freaked out by what I've written down here, because these are ideas that we've talked about before. It's just introducing a new notation on top of them. So this notation is just talking about what happens when you add or multiply a random variable. Okay, and think about my example I used in class over and over again with the way I curve a test. So let's say x is the score a student gets on a test. Well, what if I give everybody five free points? So in other words, I'm what's going on there? I'm adding a to some random variable x. In this case, a was five. Well, what happens to the mean on the test? Well, sure enough, it goes up by five, right? So it actually the formula is the mean of a constant a plus a random variable is just the constant a plus the mean of the random variable. That's an idea that we've seen before. The notation's weird, but the idea is the same thing. Now, what happens to the standard deviation of a constant plus a random variable x? Well, we talked about if I before if I curve a test by adding five points, the standard deviation doesn't change, right? So this formula just reflects that. The standard deviation of a constant plus a random variable x is just the standard deviation. The standard deviation doesn't change. This formula talks about what happens when I multiply, so a constant b times a random variable x. If I curve everybody's test by doubling everybody's score, well then the mean of everybody's score doubled is just two times the mean of what it was before. And standard deviation, if you double everybody's score, the standard deviation doubles. So don't freak out with this notation. Uh, it's just, this is ideas we've seen before, just in a little bit of a goofier notation. Okay, so this is an example just illustrating that idea. So it turns out the average temperature on some, you know, tropical island is 25 degrees Celsius, and the standard deviation is 5 degrees Celsius. Um, and so we're going to say let, uh, let me get another color here, good. Let X be the temperature on a random day. So really in terms of just notation, that's really all this example is illustrating. They're telling you that mu of x is equal to 25 and sigma of x is equal to 5. And now we're going to say, well, let's let a y be the temperature, not in Celsius anymore, but in Fahrenheit. So the question is, what is mu of y and standard deviation of y? Well, it's just, it works the way you think it does. Um, and it turns out the formula is uh, when you convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, Fahrenheit is 9 fifths times the Celsius number plus 32. You may remember that from some science class. So if I want to find y here, the formula is so I want to find what is the mean of 9 fifths x plus 32. Well, that's just, uh, the work, means work exactly the way you think they are. It's going to be 9 fifths times the mean of x plus 32, which is 9 fifths times 25 plus 32, and it turns out the mean is 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a nice uh, balmy tropical island. Standard deviation, uh, this is mean of y, excuse me. Let's find standard deviation of y. Well, in the standard deviation of y, the 32 doesn't matter. So we're finding the standard deviation of 9 fifths times this, this should be a, yeah, a 9 fifths, excuse me here, notation's getting bad, 9 fifths x plus 32, that's a 32, trust me, I'm writing small here, this is, that's just 9 fifths times the standard deviation of x, which is 9 fifths of 5, which is 9 degrees. Got a little small there, but you understand the idea. Okay, it's the, exactly things we've seen before, just written in, a, written in a goofier way. I really think that everything we're doing in this chapter 7 is ideas we've seen before with new notation. This is the first idea, I think, that actually we haven't really talked about yet. So this is the idea of combining random variables. What if you have two random variables, x and y, and you want to just add them together in some way? And I'm, something I'm going to say over and over again in class, let me just kind of, I wrote in quotes here, means... Work the way you think, think, work the way you'd expect. So mu's work the way totally you'd expect. Standard deviations don't, though, and the idea is you can't add standard deviations, you must add variances. Remember, variance is the standard deviation squared. So we're going to talk about here is you've got the mean of x plus y, of random variable plus a random variable. Well, again, 
means work the way you'd expect. This is just the mean of x plus the mean of y. And we'll do an example on the next slide. Now the next thing, you can't add standard deviation. So I wrote this in black. This is the wrong formula. Okay? I wrote it as like an example of what not to do. But it is not the case that the mean of x plus the mean of... Uh, stand, sorry, standard deviation of x plus y does not equal standard deviation of x plus standard deviation of y. You have to add the variances. So it is the case that the variance of x plus y is the variance of x plus the variance of y. And we'll do an example of that uh, right away. Just one thing to mention, this only works if x and y are independent. You can always do this no matter what, but you can only do this if x and y are independent. And let's look at an example on the next page. So it turns out that for comic books, uh, the mean number of pages is 64, and the standard deviation is 11. So that's basically saying the mean of x is 64 and the standard deviation of x is 11. So it turns out you read two comic books and so we're going to find the mean here of really x plus y where both x and y are comic books. Well means work the way you think they would. This is just the mean of x plus the mean of y. That's just going to be 64 plus 64 is 128. Now, standard deviations don't work the way they want. So if we're finding the standard deviation of x plus y, it's not just 11 plus 11. We have to think about it in terms of the variance. And so this ends up being variance of x, again, variance of standard deviation squared, plus variance of y. Well, these are both 11 squared plus 11 squared. That's going to be 121 plus 121 that's going to be 242, is the combined variance. And now we're going to say the standard deviation of x plus y is the square root of 242. And I get 15.56. And that's a good example. You can't add standard deviations. You have to add variances. Here's a nut, yet another example. So let's say some, uh, some college is looking at all their uh, applicants. And the average SAT math score of their applicants is 519, with a standard deviation of 115. Uh, for verbal, it's 507 and 111. The, what, the applic what they care about is what's their, com for their applicants, what's their combined uh, math and verbal score. So... To find the mean of x plus y, again, means work the way you think they would. It's just the mean of x plus the mean of y, which is just 519 plus 507 gets us 1026. Standard deviations, well, we can't add them. So we have to think about, we cannot just do this. Well, we want to find that. But we have to think about it in terms of variances. Well, remember I gave you this formula, right, which is squared plus... So you'd think, well, this is going to be just 115 squared plus 111 squared, and then we're going to square root, right? Well, it turns out, remember, this formula only works if x and y are independent. And think about, if you knew someone's math score, would that change your opinion or the probability of what their verbal score would be? I would think it would. In general, people who have higher math score tend to have higher verbal scores. So here, this formula only works only if independent. In this case, x and y are clearly not independent. So actually, we can't do this. So the real answer to this question is what is the mean, or sorry, what is the standard deviation of x plus y? The real answer is we don't know. We have no way of figuring it out because x and y are not independent. Um, so be careful to kind of think, of, in some cases they'll tell you it's, things are independent. Um, in my previous example, clearly two different comic books, the number of pages are independent. Um, but if they're not independent, you can always do the mean formula, but you can't do the variance formula. So we're getting close to the end here. Um, a little bit more in combining random variables. We've seen this formula, the previous couple of slides talked about this one, means work the way you think they should. Um, you can't add standard deviations. You can only add variances, only if they're independent. Now I want to talk about uh, what about at x minus y, because here we were always talking about adding random variables. Now what if you subtract random variables? Um, 
This is a little bit goofier, but actually means work the way you think they would. So if you want to find the mean of x minus y, it's just mean of x minus mean of y. Means always work the way you think they should. Variances, and this is not a mistake, if it's x minus y, the formula is you add the variances. So yes, I know there's a minus there, and I know there's a plus there. That's actually the formula. It doesn't matter for meet for standard deviations or for variances whether it's x plus y or x minus y it's the same formula over here and just intuitively the way the easiest way to think about that is remember standard deviations the distance from the mean positive or negative right so there's if you there's some variance some variation in x and there's some variation in y but you don't know it might be x is bigger or y is smaller or vice versa you really don't know so whether you're adding or subtracting, you just add the variances, ends up being the right thing to do. And we'll do an example of that on the next page. So here's our last example. So we have two students, Rob and Sally, and they basically are getting uh, test scores in various classes, and they love to compete against each other. They're two competitive students. So it turns out that for Rob, his average test grade, mean of Rob, is 88, and the standard deviation of Rob is 6. For Sally, the mean of Sally is 91 with a standard deviation of 8. Um, so actually, Sally's average is higher, but she's a little bit less consistent, right, because her standard deviation is higher. And for both students, we're going to assume that the distribution of all their test scores in the long run is normal, okay? And so we want to figure out what's the probability that Rob beats Sally. In other words, that, the sta that Rob's score is higher than Sally's score. Well, the first thing is the way you th always think about it. if you ever see a question like this where there's a, great, there's a greater than or an equals or something between two random variables, we always want to think about rewriting it. So I'm going to rewrite this as basically just subtract Sally from both sides as Rob minus Sally is greater than zero. Okay, hope you can kind of see that actually this is the same thing as this mathematically or algebraically just move the Sally over to the other side. The advantage of that is that now we can think about everything as the combined random variable r minus s. So all we really have to think about is what is the mean of r minus s and what is the standard deviation of r minus s. Well, means work the way you think they would. So this is just going to be mean of Rob minus mean of Sally is 88 minus 91 is negative 3. Standard deviations don't work the way you think they would. We have to think about variance first. This is going to be variance of Rob plus variance of Sally. Well, this is going to be 6 squared plus, uh, sorry, I had a little, I have to erase that. Oops. Plus 8 squared is going to end up being 100. And, and notice, yes, it's a plus there even though it's a minus. Remember, we talked about that in the previous slide. So the standard deviation of Rob minus Sally is just the square root of 100, which is 10. Okay, now the fact that both things are normal becomes important because now we can just say, well, now we can actually do a normal curve. The mean in the middle is the mean of R minus S. Well, we just found that it's negative 3. And the standard deviation, we just found that it's 10. And look, we're looking for what is the probability that r minus s up here is greater than 0. So 0 would actually be right here, and we're looking for this area. Okay. So on the calculator, it would just be normal CDF, 0 to big number, mean is negative 3, standard deviation is 10. And trust me, when you get that on the calculator, you get 0 0.3821, okay? which I did just doing normal CDF, 0, big number, negative 3, because that was the mean, 10, because that was the standard deviation, and 0, because we're looking for this 0 right there, okay? That'll be like one you might see on a test sometime.